Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedelic here. I've um, got some finds since I've last been here. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, really enjoyed that road trip, um, if you guys saw that video. Um, even though I didn't find a whole lot, found one really good one, which I'll be sharing. But I only found two worth keeping for now, so um, even though it was just kind of more of a getaway trip, you know, it took a couple days off work was all. Kind of glad um, things are kind of... Uh, well, things were never normal, you know, that's for sure. The world's a messed up place, but I'm just glad to see a lot of things are kind of, you know, calming down. The storm's kind of calmed, and, you know, I'm feeling a le little less cautious getting out and, you know, doing a little more th more things than I did last year. So this getaway trip just felt amazing. Time just, I didn't have to worry about time. And it felt longer than two days, so it was really nice to uh, kind of clear clear one's mind and kind of just hit the reset button and um, just just enjoyed the the whole trip without rambling on too much. Um, let's get to the finds. So I do have some more stuff coming in the mail as well. So very pumped about that. Um, I didn't do record store day. I'm not really too big into that, um, especially when it comes to like. You know, some of the stuff that gets really hyped up. Um, you know, of course, there are some nice psychedelic titles that do come out occasionally. You Pretty much every year. But there is one this year that I was kind of pumped to, you know, pick up on. And I found a good deal on uh, Discogs for it the day of because I had it on my want list that day. And the first copy that popped up was like for 200 bucks. you know. Of course, your typical flipper out there. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm gonna get that for 200. When pretty soon there's like $18 copy, $20. So it's like these people are crazy sometimes. But uh, I'll be sharing that in pretty soon. I think it got shipped out a couple days ago. So I'm um, trying to think what else. I got a 45 online just today, and um, I, I know there's another one. So many records. But uh, let's dive in for. Uh, start losing people here so um, as I showed my video uh, the salvation find Wow we the people this is their last single on RCA Victor and uh, the a side is just kind of your typical kind of blue-eyed soul you know it's got, it's got some horns mixed in and it's not very it's very unlike we the people you know how they started and once they kind of got signed up with RCA you know they thought maybe they had to couple hits coming out but of course on the b-side they had a little more freedom with um, when I arrive which it's actually one of the first tracks I discovered on YouTube as far as like kind of a garage psych track so this track was really stuck in my head uh, for like a decade you know not not really looking for it too hard but always keep a lookout if you ever see it pop up online and oh this is so cool so whoever dumped these 45s at the Salvation Army, it's not in the best shape. It's probably like a VG plus. It's got some marks, but not too bad. Um, but yeah, whoever dumped all these 45s off must have been some kind of DJ. You know, back in the late 60s, early 70s, had a bunch of just a lot of rare, not rare, but like kind of uncommon 45s that you'd find that they kind of played on the radio at the time. And uh, this is one of them, thankfully. And they all came in like these custom sleeves, so that's how I could tell it was someone in the broadcast industry that had these 45s. So, um, and then this one. This is one I found back on my trip, um, going through Grand Island. Uh, spent the whole next day just kind of slowly coming back throughout the interstate and visiting some of the other towns I haven't been to in a while and. Uh, Grand Island's not too far from me, but um, hadn't stopped at the Goodwills in a while. And this one I just took a blind chance on, and this one actually turned out to be pretty sweet. This is New Beginnings by John Owens and Friends. This came out in 76, but I think there's a couple of a couple other variations I found online that uh, kind of... I think they have like the same track listing, but they reissued it like the next year, and couple different variations on it but this is basically Christian folk music but very much very um, kind of whimsical at times 
And some of the chord progressions that some of these folk tunes have are very acid folk inspired. It was really quite surprising to hear some of that stuff. So um, up, I actually uploaded a couple of better tracks onto my other channel, Cosmic Minds, which um, I'll probably leave a link in the description if you guys hadn't checked that out already. Um, yeah, so um, pretty much all the members here, I don't know, there might be more than four involved here, but they all had their own take on these different, uh, you know, very Christian Latin uh, songs, all original material, but uh, the way they were written. So it's kind of a mixed bag of like soft rock from like the mid 70s kind of flavor to it. A lot of flangy uh, electric guitar floating throughout the mix. A lot of ghostly female vocals, um, both male and female, and both pretty pretty good. It's got kind of this very homegrown kind of sound, you know, very homemade sounding. And um, so overall, this is quite impressive. Um, anybody into that kind of delicate, it's not necessarily psych folk, but it's it's pretty close. Um, very well done, though. Um, you know, oftentimes a lot of these Christian records, you only find like one track, but uh, this one's kind of grown on me. The more I listen to it, the more the magic kind of unravels itself within and uh, it's actually pretty enjoyable so get a chance to pop on this if you can um, if you're in that sort of thing so this is kind of something you would find in maybe the acid archives I don't believe it's in there but um, it's in the archivist um, archives so okay and then a viewer of my uh, YouTube channel who does comment a lot um, I don't know his or her name but agitation free I believe is a reference to uh, the band. Um, actually recommended this album to me a couple videos back maybe and I popped on it. I found a clean copy for like eight bucks on eBay. And this is West, uh, their self-titled debut on Epic. I like how they uh, custom, you know, someone actually drew West in an orange. I actually kind of dig that. But yeah, I've always seen this cover online. I've always kind of assumed that maybe it was kind of like one of those, uh, you know, Flying Burrito Brothers, um, sort of like post-60s hippies gone hillbilly. <laughs> that is the way I described it online. But uh, yeah, West, I think these guys were actually from maybe the East Coast. Am I wrong? I, I'm not positive on that. I could be very wrong with a name like that but yeah they had a second album too which actually a lot of people overwhelmingly recommended to me I was kind of surprised like man a lot of people like that sophomore album which I have to check out yet but um, given this initial first listens I th think I spun this maybe three times in full um, it's pretty good I would say the first side's the, got the strongest material it's very vocal harmony driven kind of rural rock. Um, not a whole lot of psych flavor, but I'm definitely into like those kind of dreamy vocal pop um, sorts of bags, you know. But my favorite track, of course, is Summer Flower, which is probably the most psych influenced track. It's kind of more on the pop psych realm. Um, overall, though, uh, not too bad. I mean, even some of the songs on Psych 2 get a little silly, you know, kind of venturing that country rock territory where they're kind of tongue-in-cheek, but um, for the price I paid, pretty happy with it. Um, I don't know if this is going to stick around or not, though, um, even though I did enjoy it. Um, this is kind of one that I can't see myself returning too often. Um, however, uh, thank you, Agitation Free, for uh, recommending this one to me. It was definitely a fine listen, so... Kind of glad I took a chance on it and uh, might be featured in one of my later mixes. So, speaking of mixes, or my psychedelic trips as I like to call them, uh, I actually did record, um, or uh, I should say ripped off of my record player onto my laptop before recording this, so a new trip is in the works. So, there's that. And then I got two more here. Um, saving the best for last, by the way. I totally forgot I had this in the pile. 
Uh, but this is the last one I got in the mail recently. Again, another one I took a chance on. So if you guys remember the LP I shared, the Berets, it's on the Avant Garde label. It's kind of a more, I think these guys were based out of Spain, perhaps, somewhere around that region, and they had an American release on the Avant Garde label, which is kind of a small label associated with a lot of Christian records from the era. And this is one of them that I just uh, looked up online, found a few tracks, and I thought, doesn't sound half bad. wonder what the rest is like. And thankfully, half of this is really good. So this is Becoming One by The Mission. And this is like a... I don't know. It's not... It's kind of more of a collection of songs. Because this, this band, The Mission, are kind of associated with a whole bunch of like different Christian records from the era. Kind of getting kind of hip with the whole scene. People getting turned on. Um... Well, this is actually a pretty, pretty decent record. It starts off a little, little wanky, you know, not, not very strong at all. Um, Where you belong is the first decent track, and then Pie in the Sky is actually using the melody of CCR's track. Um, Have you seen the rain? But by by the time you get to side two, it actually gets a lot better. It's more in that kind of folk pop and folk rock territory. Maybe hints of like Buffalo Springfield ish. Um, the title track, Becoming One, gets a little more on the pop psych side. Some vocal delays going on. Overall, kind of a mellow sound on side two, which I really enjoy. So um, this is actually, might be a keeper for a while, um, just for the side two. Um, it's actually got some decent songs, so probably feature one of the tracks in this, in this video. So you guys can check it out. And so far, it's a pretty cheap album to get. I think it goes for like maybe 10 bucks. I got it just a little under that. Have a guard label. Looks like a toilet paper roll <laughs> for the logo. And uh, so there's that one. Okay, and then the, for this last one, this is one I've been wanting for, again, a long time probably five years or so. Um, I first discovered this in college, actually. Um, and then I eventually added the guy on Facebook, and we haven't really chatted too much, but he's not very active on there as far as I can tell, but um, really, really enjoy this guy's music. Um, he's released maybe two other solo albums over the, over the past maybe 50 years, but this was his first album. This is Mark Johnson, his album Years, and this came out in 72 on the Vanguard label. A um, little past, you know, the psychedelic era, but this one, man, it's it's kind of more laced in that singer-songwriter, kind of uh, kind of more eccentric side. Uh, very reminiscent of like the dark period of Tim Buckley and David Stoughton on Elektra, if you guys are familiar with that album. It's kind of like a one-man project where he plays most of the instrumentation and he's just a very ambitious, like, young songwriter and even the cover itself kind of resembles the music um, very somber very yearning and also you know kind of searching for something he's in the music the way that music kind of persuades you it's, it's like he's kind of searching for his own um, identity and trying to figure out what life's about for him after all this perhaps trauma it's um it's got a lot of meaning to it a lot of hitting hidden uh, meaning within the passages and the tracks that are listed here on the back, the lyrics. The side two on this, uh, with the first song, A Long Song, is one of the finest psych folk songs I've ever heard. It's, um, it's kind of one of those tracks you just never forget. It's that good. It features a recorder, like during this kind of soloing part, kind of reminiscent of like Amadon by Mike Oldfield a little bit. It's got kind of that feel to it, um, which is really cool. It has like this kind of Scottish flavor, I've noticed, you know, with the use of this kind of very airy recorder floating throughout the mix with this, you know, kind of fragile, delicate voice. Um, that is definitely a key highlight track to uh, take home from this, but overall, very strong, and it's got some kind of pre-power pop moves, um, especially on that first track, Rainy Dews. 
Um, so yeah, can't say can't say enough about this one. Mark Johnson, years. It's one of those one of my favorite singer songwriter albums uh, during this kind of post hippie era. Um, that's a white label promo, by the way. I don't know if I showed the, the label there. So pretty clean disc and finally got a great deal on that. That album's kind of pushing towards the hundred dollar mark and. I remember years ago, I think I saw Buy It Now for like 30 or 40. Should have popped on it then. So yeah, that about does it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for the support. Thanks for uh, checking out my other channel. And just I love turning people on to uh, sounds that I'm discovering. So uh, till then, uh, we shall see you soon.